And yeah, we should talk a little bit about that. Holiday Theatre years, do you mind, John? Um, you found it was the first, first, first children's theatre, and it was, I came back from being inspired by Corpenning in Chicago. That's where it fits. And how did you create that theatre? Well, Dorothy gave me a, the Freddie Wood, the old Freddie Wood, which was a Quonset hut, and we started by playing uh, there on weekends, and then we found that we couldn't make enough money to have food on the table that way, so we started touring British Columbia, and we developed a tour that is still one that everybody does. Uh, Jack, my husband, went out and went over, uh, with, I think, without sleeping except to take the car off to the side of the road. Vancouver Island lined up the whole tour of Vancouver and came back and did the whole of, of British Columbia through. So practically, how did you get the money to start the company? We put in $20 each and started it with $140. It was Jesse Richardson, Sidney Risk, John Thorne, me, a man called Russell Williams, and Dan MacDonald. Thumbed his way across Canada to come to Summer School of the Theatre and ended up in the first tours of Holiday Theatre. And $140 was enough to Well, that's how we... That's how we mounted it, yes, and that's how we, we, yes, $140, and we had a little prefect car, and we put the scenery on the top, and we toured Vancouver at first. And then when we went out on tour, we had a school bus. So you got the Quonset Hall Theatre for nothing? Did you have to pay for yes, it? Yes, no, no. And then the venues that you went to, would you have to pay the venue a fee? or? No, they paid us a guarantee. And they, and they boarded and roomed us when we, they looked after us when we were there. And who set up the tour? Who was the tour manager? Uh, 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 the woman I fo formed Holiday Theatre with, which was Myra Benson. She was the, she did the, all that. And she was an actor as well. And she finally went to England, studied with uh, Brian Way and Peter Slade and became an expert on child drama, on, on teaching children. Uh, and she had a school, we had a summer school for teenagers, first one. And when you toured, were you playing to schools or were you yeah, playing? entirely schools. So then she just phoned schools and said, I have a theater company coming from Vancouver, can we yeah. come and play? I, I, I remember going to visit um, a man who had been my teacher at Kitsilana High School who was a, an inspector in, the, in schools and he was retiring. And I went to see him and I said, I want to get in the schools with my children's theatre company. I was really on fire about, about children's theatre, of course, from Corpenning, and I just felt it, it, it was something Canada needed. So he said, I told him the whole story about it, and he said, you know, if I wasn't retiring, I wouldn't be able to do this. But I am retiring. I'm finished actually in a couple of months. So I'm going to put this through while I'm still here. Because it's very important you get in the schools, but no one's ever been allowed to do it before. So I'm going to put it through as that that's what you're going to do. And I won't be around to see if there's a, if there's a problem. So you better do a good job. And so we did. And roughly how many schools would you have gone to on the tour? Oh, those figures are around somewhere 100. Because we did, we did Vancouver, and then we did the island, and then we did the lower part of the province, and finally went up into Prince George and Prince Rupert and places. We toured a lot, 53 to 60. So. Still, that's 14 yeah, years. Yeah, it was good. And then the, the Playhouse eventually swallowed it. I, I, you know, it, it, it toured for a while, and it did children's work with a wonderful man that's now, uh, was at Stratford and is now at the National Theatre School. Um, David Latham. He was he he did the children's work at the Playhouse after I had gone on to the Okanagan and then to Montreal. And did he you was write doing some it of and then plays? all the high school work was written. We did things like um, taking the idea of the first person, the first man in space, being the same as Shakespeare, taking off into the theater world, and we did. Uh, we did scenes from Romeo and Juliet, you know, with the fellas doing, and all the kids in the gym screaming because they were so sexy. And 
It was good. It was good. Uh, we did uh, special shows to introduce them to drama that was in their curriculum, and we did two thirds were new plays in, in holiday theater. Did you eventually get some government funding? I think not until the centennial year. We toured Canada in the centennial year with two plays. One was by uh, Eric Nichol called Beware the Quickly Who, which was this Canada's uh, sense of wanting to be something fast, like the neighbor. And it was, uh, uh, it was the two fellows, one French and one English, and uh, they were attacked by the uh, Jolly Green Giant from it was wonderfully written. It was beautiful. So that was centennial year. I did, took over the Playhouse, did the national tour for holiday theater going across, and uh, directed my first production of um, the Benjamin Britten uh, Noah's Flood with Nicky Goldsmith. And played Puck in an opera. Not that year, no. No, not that year. So wait a minute. Wait a minute, George. Okay, we're talking about women in theater here. No, but that you was a big year. You not only acted, that... you not only directed, you not only wrote, you not only ran companies, you not only had three children, <laughs> you not only were from the founders of PAL. I mean, how did you fit it all in? Don't know. How do you fit it in? When I read my, when I read all that stuff that you just said, it makes me tired, I think. This woman did too much. So where do you get your energy from? And when does your energy drop, collapse? I mean, you have collapsed. Well, the heart business is hard. I have to be careful now. Right. Yeah. That, that... Because I've always associated you with energy, mm -hmm. coming at everything, which I adore. But I know that energized people do have a time when the switch goes off. And we're talking about creativity in you, right? Yeah. How do you... The demon, you say, we started saying you are called to this. Someone... It is called. This is your yeah, profession. You're called to, to it. And you have to find another way that your body will accept. You know, you have to live within your limitations. Right. The secret of this place and making a success of PAL is people learning to live within their limitations without giving up right. ideals and joy and uh, life. Uh, it's I interesting. Ask, I will ask you the question I asked Powis Thomas. Oh, yes. At the National Theatre School, dear Paus Thomas was still yes. alive and he directed this in an exercise, I think. And in my state of vast unknowingness, I said to Paus, where do you get your strength from? Mm -hmm. Is that, what did he say? He said the mountains. He said from nature. He said that's uh. where I get my strength from. So I ask you the same question, where do you get your strength from? I, I don't know. I, I'd have to say God. I don't know. It, it was given me. I was born with it. I don't pump it up. You know, it was there and had to be used. And what you try and do is, is use what you were given to the max. Of all people, Bill, uh, you know, Shatner, is his name? Bill, Bill Shatner, yeah. Was in the first, we were both in the very first production, General Motors live drama out of Toronto, CBC. We weren't the very first one, we were the second show. It was directed by a man called Bob Allen. He brought me from Chicago to play a part in it. Toby Robbins was in it, Bill Needles was in it, and Bill Shatner played. This husband who was very ambitious and, uh, and he needed his sister-in-law uh, to stay with them and pay rent because he needed the money for something. I don't know. It was, I can't remember. It's, in my, it's on my website. It says what it is. And we are... We are we're live. And he loses the line. And the camera's on me, and I see him go. And in requeuing and getting back on again, we lose a minute, live. So 
right next to the camera from then on, there's a finger going, going like this. I'm dying to see him again and remind him of that. He said, they said, what are you doing next? And he said what he was doing next, and it had to do with horses or something. And, 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 and they said, well, what, what is your ideal, you know, of, your, of, of this time in your life? And he said, I try to do as much as I can with however many minutes I have left. And I thought, yeah, I know that. I think that's what I do. Thank you, Joy. <laughs> it's such a pleasure. This has been a Thank, joy. It's been wonderful to have you here.